So I didn't get to finish my thoughts. And so next week I'll plan on continuing this theme. If you look in the bulletin, uh, I want to talk with you about the revelation of God in Jesus Christ. Um, if you will, turn to Hebrews 1, verse 1. And if you don't mind, I would like to read some quotes from uh, some of the Puritans that I think will help shape our mind and the focus of this message. John Calvin said this, It is only through Christ alone that God wills himself to be known. John Flavel wrote this, The knowledge of Jesus Christ is the very marrow and kernel of all the scriptures, the scope and center of all divine revelation. Both testaments meet in Christ. John Owen wrote this, How be it that real view which we may have of Christ and his glory in this world by faith, However weak and obscure that knowledge which we may have attained of them by divine revelation is inexpressibly to be preferred above all other wisdom, understanding, or knowledge whatsoever, the knowledge of Christ. So in verse 1 of Hebrews, we read this. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past, to the fathers by the prophets. He has in these last days spoken to us by his Son. He's spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also made the worlds. Verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. So the brightness, the radiance, the light shining forth of the glory of God and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had, had by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. When it says the brightness of his glory, I remember Psalm, 30, Psalm 36 verse 9 where it says, With him or with you is the fountain of life, and in your light do we see light. Jesus Christ is that light by which we see the glory of God. And that's what I want to talk with you about this morning. Um, this morning I wanted to speak on the revelation of God in Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the revelation of God. And Jesus Christ is the revealer of God's glory. I want to press some thoughts to you um, from Scripture that I think will help shape, shape our understanding as we seek to know more of Jesus Christ. And I hope that these thoughts from God's Word will cause in us a desire to know Him more and uh, to see Him as the pearl of great price, to treasure Him. So this is the message when we see Jesus Christ for who he is, we see God, not as a withholding God, but as a giving, revealing God, even to his own enemies. In Jesus Christ, we are freely given the knowledge of God, the mysteries that we just read about in Colossians. Our, sal our salvation is primarily the seeing of Jesus Christ. Salvation is primarily all about us seeing the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In salvation, God is displaying all of who He is in Jesus Christ. So, before we begin on that topic, I think it would be helpful to define what revelation is. And uh, the word revelation means that which is revealed or made known. It could refer to the act of revealing, 
or it could be referred to the, as the content of the revelation. Um, so when I say the revelation of God, I mean that what has been made known by God to us about Himself and about all things that exist in relationship to Him. So what has been made known is revelation. Theologians distinguish between two types of revelation. I think this is helpful. They distinguish between special revelation and general revelation. Uh, if you will, turn to Romans 1. General revelation is what God reveals about himself in creation and the things that can be sensed and known through the physical senses, things that I can see, taste, touch. And in those things, in creation, I can understand what God is like. And verse 18 we read about the wrath of God and how it's revealed. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness, because what may be known of, of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. How? Verse 20. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his, his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So anytime anybody who is created looks at anything in creation, they should know without excuse that there is a God and know that he created it. So on the other side, special revelation. Special revelation is what God has revealed about himself in his word, the Bible. It is special in that I see even more of what God is like, but not just that, I see who God is in this type of revelation. This God who created all things, all the things that I experience every single day, has revealed who he is in special revelation. His own identity has been disclosed. So both types of revelation are communicative, meaning that God is communicating something to us. It's relational. In general, in general revelation, he reveals to me his character and divine nature. In special revelation, he tells me his name. He shows his desires. He reveals his will. He shows me how and why all things are created. It might be helpful to think of general revelation as a bunch of signposts that point you to God. And they're communicating something to you that points away from itself to God. Creation, as we encounter it every single day, points you to God. Special revelation is like a window through which I see God. I cannot look through a signpost. I look at the signpost and it directs my gaze off the signpost and whatever it's pointing to. But the Word of God is like a window through which I never... I never stop looking through the Word in order to see God. It's not as if I look at the Word and then move on. I must look through the Word of God in order to see Him and understand Him and know who He is. So, special revelation is like a window through which I see God. So, I think it would be helpful uh, an illustration Imagine that you are in a house, okay? And we can call this house the world. And all around you in this house are a bunch of signposts. And they're pointing you to look at something. And in this house, there is a window. There's only one window. And all these signposts are pointing you through to look through this window. Um, 
there's only one window. Creation is like all of these signposts that you look at and it directs your gaze to God and through the Word. This is the reason why it is good and right to call this book the Holy Scriptures, because it's the only one. It's the only window. This is the reason why many people have died to preserve the Bible. It is the most valuable gift that this world has been given. It is only, there is only one window through which we can know God personally and see His glory. But I do want to note something very important. A danger that we can fall into because of the immense value of God's Word. And this, I think, has been a real danger, even in Reformed circles like ours, um, where we have good theology, right doctrine, and we value the Word of God. And that, that warning or that, that uh, danger is that there's an order of revelation. Um, and so all of revelation, special revelation and general revelation are, are means by which we see God. They're not the end in of themselves. And so what I mean is it be helpful to go back to the illustration. Let's say that in this house, I see all of the signposts. They direct my gaze toward the window. And then I walk up to the window. And instead of looking through the window, I, I just look at the window itself. And I say, wow, look at this window. There's no scratches on it. It's perfect. It fits nicely together. But instead of looking through the window, I'm just looking at the window. It would be just like if I came to the scriptures and instead of looking through them, I'm just seeing how all the parts fit nicely together. And I see that it is a perfect word and I see that it reveals things about creation, but never seeing Christ. And this is exactly what Christ said to those Jews in John 5, right? And in John 5, 39, where he says to those Jews, you search the scriptures because you think in them you have eternal life. But what do those scriptures do? They bear witness, they testify of me. And so it is a real danger that we can even, in the name of valuing God's word, start to just look at the window instead of looking through the window and seeing Christ. And so, if you will, go to 2 Corinthians 3. And I think that this shows us the... Um, how to avoid that problem. Um, knowing the right order. Those Jews valued and saw more beauty in the window, in those scriptures, than they did in Christ, who those scriptures pointed to, right? So in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, we read this. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So in this context, Paul is comparing and contrasting the face of Moses and the face of Christ. The Old Testament, uh, the, old, the Old Covenant, and the glory of the new covenant. Um, one is a ministry of death, Paul says in chapter 3, and one is a ministry of life, revelation, and glory. And this one over here, the, the old covenant, is not one without glory. Moses went up to the mountain, and he was a mediator, a type of Christ. 
And whenever he saw the glory of God, his face shone. And whenever he came down from the mountain, it's as if the people would see that glory, the glory of God through Moses' face, because his face shone. But it was a ministry of condemnation. There was glory in it. And that's why Moses had to veil his face. So one ministry is a veiled ministry. And it says in chapter 3 that it's only in Christ is the veil removed. So we see the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. If you if, go to chapter 4, verse 3. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose mind the God of this world has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So going back to chapter 3, verse 18, it says this, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror. Why does he think that he says in a mirror? That word is also translated glass beholding in a glass and I take that as to mean if you look at the previous chapter it says that even to this day the Jews still read the Old Testament with a veiled face but only in Christ is that veil, rem veil removed in the new covenant of Christ that veil is is removed so what is this glass and I think that this glass is when we look into the scriptures, when we look through the scriptures, we behold the glory of the Lord in the face of Jesus Christ. We, we behold the glory of the Lord in the face of Jesus Christ. If you will, go to John 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Notice he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ is behind all revelation from God. There is a quote that I heard and I couldn't find uh, where it was from, I, I just remember sort of how it went, and I might butcher it, but it, it goes something like this. In Jesus Christ, there is not even a hint or mixture of darkness, and all that is good radiates from him as all things were made good through him. He is the light behind, behind all lights, the beauty behind all beauties, the good behind all goodness, the love behind all loves, the truth behind all truth. He is the radiance of the Father, and there is nothing in Him that is found to be distasteful or dark. We could say with this verse that Jesus Christ is the way behind all ways, the truth behind all truth, the life behind all life. Look at the second part of the verse. Notice this. He says, No one comes to me, or sorry, no one comes to the Father except through me. It is through Christ that we come to God. It is through Christ. It is not that we pass him by. We come through him and in him. In this way of salvation, it, salvation is never separated from our being in Christ. Never separated from Christ. 
Jesus Christ is our salvation, and therefore any part of our our part of salvation, any part of salvation, as we understand it, can only be in Christ. That is why he said, I am the way. It is through him and in him. Notice this also. Notice that he says, comes to and not gets to the Father. It is not as if we come through Christ and get to the Father somewhere deep inside Christ. He says, comes to the Father. We come to a present Father in Jesus Christ. All of the Father is in Christ, filling Christ. So when we see Jesus Christ, the Father in His fullness is coming to us. The Father is not a distant Father. And this is why in verse 7, look at verse 7, Jesus says, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know Him and see Him. As we come to Christ, we come to the Father. The Father is in Christ coming to us and pursuing us. And when we unite to Christ, we unite to the Father. When the Son of God speaks, the Father is speaking. The when, when the Son of God is working, the Father is working. The Father and the Son are one. And sometimes we need Christ to continue to show us these things. So this is exactly what he does with Philip. Philip didn't understand. And so in verse 8, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. Jesus Christ said that no one comes to the Father except through me. And maybe Philip didn't hear that. But he's saying, show us the Father, as if the Father in somehow is apart from Christ. Because Christ was going to the Father. He was going away. The disciples were shaken. And Philip, scared, said, just show us the Father and it's enough for us. It's sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you for so long and yet you do not know me, Philip? So when Jesus Christ said that, do you not know me? Did Jesus Christ mishear Philip? Philip was talking about the Father. No, Jesus Christ said that purposefully. He says right after that, He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the, work, the sake of the works themselves. In these verses, we see that Jesus Christ, by virtue of his relationship to the Father, reveals to us who the Father is just by being who he is. And so, when we see him, as he's proclaimed in the scriptures, it's as if Christ is coming to us through God's word, and we see in Christ, the fullness of the Father. If you will, go to John 17. And all of, I, all of that I've said so far, it is therefore this. What we have been given in salvation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Our salvation is beholding the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's our salvation. And that's the end to which Jesus Christ prays in John 17. And verse 24. So in John 17, verse 24, we read this. Father, I desire that they also... So he says, Father, I desire. And in this context, he was right about to be crucified. And he said to his disciples, all things have been delivered into my hands. And so having all things delivered into his hands and going to the cross of crucifixion, he asks this, this is his desire, that they also whom you gave me 
may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. This is what is behind all of Revelation. God the Father sending, displaying, giving His Son, glorifying His Son, revealing His Son, so that the Son in turn may be glorifying the Father, revealing the Father. Look at verse 26. And I have declared to them your name. He reveals the Father. And will declare it. That the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. In these verses we see that God the Father gives the perfect and final revelation of his glory in Jesus Christ. And that Jesus Christ reveals God the Father to us. The Father shows the Son and then the Son turns and shows us the Father. This is the point and end of all revelation. All that we've talked about so far is this. Jesus Christ is behind all revelation. Jesus Christ is the point and end of all revelation. All things that give knowledge, whatever it may be, in general revelation or special revelation, whatever is revealing, whatever is giving knowledge, its point and end is this, Jesus Christ. Because all things were created through him and by him and for him. Jesus Christ is the revelation of God and all things. And if you noticed on the bulletin, I mentioned that we would be looking in John 1, 1. Um, we won't be able to get there. And then in Revelation, next week I hope to continue these thoughts um, along the same theme. And next week, I hope that we'll see that Jesus Christ is the Word of God. And why is Jesus called the Word of God? In John 1 and also in Revelation 19. And where is God's glory most revealed? In Jesus Christ. And what kind of God does Jesus Christ show us? And then I hope to see in Revelation why Jesus Christ is the only one worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. Um, I wanted to end with a quote and that's by John Flavel. And this is convicting to me and also encouraging to me and impresses me in. It's this. Take heed that you rest not satisfied with the knowledge of Christ that you have attained, but grow on towards perfection. It is the pride and ignorance of many professors when they have got a few raw and un undi undigested notions to swell with self-conceit of their excellent attainments. And is, it is the sin even of the best of saints when they see how deep the knowledge of Christ lies and what pains they must go to take and dig for it, to throw away the shovel of duty and cry, dig we cannot. To your work, Christians, to your work, let not your candle go out. Sequester yourselves to this study. Count all, therefore, but dross in comparison of that excellency which is in the knowledge of Jesus Christ.